This is the day that the Lord has made. It's the first Sunday in the month of May. Let us choose to rejoice and be glad in this day. God is good all the time. Sisters, and all the time, God is good. He's good when things are going well in your life. He's thing, he, he, is, he is good when, when you're going through the storm. God is good because he is God, and that's his character. Oh, I tell you, we serve an awesome God who watches over us, and we should thank him for this season in our lives, whatever we're going through. The song said, God, whatever you're doing in this season in my life, don't do it without me. So for just a few minutes this morning, I want to add to the lesson we had last week on love and forgiveness, uh, a way of life. You know, we're God's daughters reigning as heirs, but unless you recognize what your father has done for you, you'll never be complete. You'll never see yourself as he does. So we talked about God's way is the way, obeying God's way or not, and the principle of forgiveness. So for just about 10 minutes this morning, before we get ready to uh, hear what Roxy has to say, and then before we go into our breakout sessions, I just want to address I'm guilty and I can't let go and back from the dead. So you have to understand that you've been forgiven and begin to live, live in that place of love and forgiveness. 100% of the Christian life is love and forgiveness. I'm guilty and I can't let go. You know, last week we talked about love and forgiveness. Today, I just want to add a little bit to that lesson. So I want to talk to you today about loving yourself and forgiving yourself. St. Matthew twenty two thirty seven 37 says, you shall love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, soul, mind, and strength as your neighbor and your neighbor as yourself. So what this scripture says is that you have to know how to love yourself before you can love anyone else. Loving yourself includes forgiving yourself, learning just who you are in Christ Jesus and understanding that you're no longer bound by the past. It's your vertical relationship. It's about you and God. So it's just, it's gotta be about your it's got to be about your vertical before it can be about your horizontal. Ephesians 4.32 says, but be ye kind one to another, tenderhearted, forgiving one another, even as God for Christ's sake has forgiven you. But be ye kind to yourself, tenderhearted, forgiving yourself, even as God for Christ's sake has forgiven you. Be kind to yourself, sisters. Forgive yourself, even as God has forgiven you. Let go of the guilt and shame of your sin. Yeah, there may be consequences to suffer as a result of the negative choices, but God forgives your sin and you don't have to pay the penalty of that sin. You're forgiven. God doesn't remember that sin anymore, nor should you. Sisters, are you greater than God? If God forgives you, why can't you forgive yourself? If you believe God's word and he is the object of your faith, then why don't you believe what your object says? He said, I'll forgive your sins and remember them no more. But your mind says, I'm guilty and I can't let go. And I, I, I don't believe that God really meant what he said. You continue to suffer the guilt and the shame, but you learn to cover it up. But your, your mind is still filled with lies and misbelief. You don't believe, you don't have faith in your object. You continue to uncover what God has already removed, but you hang on to it. You have only covered it over and then something happens to uncover that thing that you are still holding on to. It comes back from the dead. And in the story of the life of Joseph in Genesis 37, and we won't have time to read all of these scriptures, but I've sent them to you, but please read chapter 37 through chapter 50. As a part of your devotion, there are some rich lessons in those few chapters and it talks about forgiveness. In Genesis 37, verse three and four, Bible said that Joseph was hated by his 10 older brothers. What? I'm sorry. No, I'm going some. I'm sorry. Am I okay? You're good, Dr. Dye. Good, Somebody was unmuted. Oh, okay. So Joseph was hated by his 10 older brothers because it appeared to them that Jacob loved him more than he did them. So they didn't really hate Joseph, but they hated the father. Joseph became the object of their hatred. He had the father's approval and they didn't. If we remove the object of our father's love, he'll love us, they thought. So the more that innocent Joseph talked to them, the more their hatred grew. Joseph was the favored son and their jealousy turned to envy. They wanted what Joseph had, the favor and approval of they, their father. They envied Joseph. Am I on? Okay. 
In Genesis 37, 18, they began to conspire to get rid of Joseph. A root of bitterness is springing up in their hearts. You know, when you begin to wish evil on others, you're sprouting a root of bitterness. When you're unwilling to forgive, you have a root of bitterness. Colossians 3 and 8 says, put off anger. If you don't put off anger, then it's going to proceed to wrath and malice and blasphemy and filthy communication out of your mouth. A root of bitterness springs up and that root is hard to dig up. And we can see that in the story about Joseph and his brothers. So they conspired to kill him. But Reuben, who's the oldest brother, he intervened and he had a plan of his own. He said, let's don't kill him. Let's just throw him in a pit. So his plan was to go back later and rescue Joseph from the pit. Why didn't he just say, no, this is our little brother. Leave him alone. Reuben was the eldest son. He had a responsibility to protect his brother, but he didn't. So then in Genesis 30, 37, 28, the, old, the other brothers, while Reuben was gone, they sold Joseph to the Midianites while, while Reuben was gone. So they hatched another plan in Genesis 37, 31, and 32. They put animal blood on Joseph's coat and took it to their father. So when Jacob saw the coat, he assumed that Joseph had been devoured by wild beasts. So the plan that the brothers had of getting their father's approval failed. The cause, Joseph, was gone physically, but the father still held on to him. They made things worse. They didn't get what they wanted. Jacob spent all of his days grieving for his son. 15 years he spent grieving for his son. And Back from the dead, we fast forward to Genesis chapter 45. That which you thought was dead is actually alive. So now it all comes rushing back. They found out that their brother is alive and well and is actually the prime minister in Egypt. Fear sets in because the brothers know that they deserve Joseph's wrath. But Joseph was gracious and he knew that God had a plan for his life and his brothers unknowingly fulfilled that plan. Joseph forgave, but the brothers continued to live in fear. They felt their misbeliefs and their guilt convinced them that the only reason Joseph said he forgave them was because of their father. So they thought that Joseph had an ulterior motive. He was just waiting for the chance to kill them. So they figured that Joseph would not, wouldn't cause more grief and sorrow to their father as long as he lived. But once the father was dead, he was going to kill them. They looked at Jacob as their buffer, their shield between them and death. They lived in fear for 17 years, believing that their father was their protector. So look at how much time they wasted by hanging on to their misbeliefs and not accepting the forgiveness that had been extended to them. They thought that forgiveness had strings attached. Their own guilt fueled their, fueled their value system and they couldn't live their lives to the fullest. Sisters, what are you hanging on to that's preventing you from fulfilling your purpose in God? What beliefs have you told yourself that causing you to be fearful and afraid? How many years have you been in bondage because you refuse to believe the truth of God's word? How long will you hold on to the past? How long will you remain in that place of shame? How long will you fear? How long will you stay in the pit, the personally induced turmoil? When what they thought was their, was their protector was removed, then the fear was accelerated. Their father died and then they knew that Joseph was going to kill them. Genesis 50 verse 15 through 18. These brothers didn't even have the courage to go to Joseph to let them know their fears. The Bible said they sent a messenger to ask Joseph to forgive them. We'll be your slaves, they said, because we know the only reason you didn't kill us earlier is because of our father. We're willing to be your slaves if you just let us live. Insecurity, misbeliefs, guilt, shame, conniving, lack of trust. They thought of Joseph the same thing that they knew about themselves. So after they sent the messenger back to Joseph to deliver their message, then they went to him, fell down before him and told him, we'll be your servants. So Joseph reassured them that they didn't have to fear him. He said, God is the judge. And he used these circumstances that you, that you knew were evil and he used them for good. Romans 8, 28, and we know that all things work together for good to those who love the Lord, to those who are the called according to his purpose. So when Joseph forgave his brothers, he did it from the heart. He forgave their sin. He didn't hold it against them. He wasn't waiting to take revenge on them. Sisters, God has forgiven you. He's not waiting to get back at you for your sins. He doesn't even remember them. When God forgave you, he meant what he said. You're holding on to the guilt of your actions, unwilling to forgive yourself. Are you in the place of God? 
Are you greater than God? Do you believe God? Are you convinced that the object of your faith declares that what the object of your faith declares is the truth? Since he has forgiven you and continues to forgive you, why can't you forgive yourself? If he has put your sins in, sins in the sea of forgetfulness, why do you keep fishing in that sea? If your sins are under the blood of Jesus, why do you continue to try to go under the blood to see those sins? Sisters, let it go. Stop allowing the past to control your life. Why hold on to a dead past? Why continue to let the past beat you up? You can't go back and change the past. You have to release it to God. Forgive yourself even as God has forgiven you and live this life of now faith and obedience and abundance. Understand that you're no longer a victim. You're a victor. You're more than a conqueror through Christ Jesus. You are a daughter of God. You're reigning with him as an heir and a joint heir but you're bound by your misbeliefs and fear rather than the truth and faith. You're a Christian, yes, but you're still in bondage. Sisters, let the past go. Release what God has already forgiven you for. It. Let it go. Don't go out to the graveyard and dig up that dead stuff. Don't let that stuff come back from the dead. Sisters, leave it buried, leave it, leave it where it is. Sisters, God has forgiven you. Don't go dig it up again. Know that God says what he means and he means what he says. God is faithful. In fact, he's more than faithful. He said when he forgives, it's over. You don't have to suffer the penalty of that sin. The consequences, yes, but the penalty, no. There are always consequences because of disobedience, but God forgives the sin. People in jail have gotten saved, but although God has forgiven that sin, they still have to pay the consequences of that sin. Sisters, don't waste your life living in guilt. Let it go. You're in his grace and his forgiveness is in that grace. He's gifted you with his forgiveness. Now it's up to you to receive that gift. When you accept what God has already done, you'll have the joy of extending that same gift to others. And be ye kind to yourself, tenderhearted, forgiving yourself, even as God, for Christ's sake, has forgiven you. God bless you, sisters love you. Live in his love. Live in his forgiveness. God bless you. Back to you, Sister Roxy. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. I know we've gotten a lot from today. I'm not going to take up a lot of time. I just want to, uh, no matter how hard I, and thank you, y'all. Y'all, let's give some love to Dr. Dye as always. Let's give some love to Dr. Dye as always. I'm thanking her for filling us up and, um, I, I know I spent a lot of time talking to Dr. Dye because I, you know, Dr. God sent me Dr. Dye on a personal and professional level. <laughs> he sent me Dr. Dye and uh, on a personal and professional level. So I praise God um, for her. Uh, and um, so I, I just thank you. Thank you, Sister Dye, for what you pour into each of us. And I know you talked to a lot of us all during the week. <laughs> so we appreciate, we appreciate you for how you pour into us. Uh, I want to share, I tried uh, very hard to ensure that we are communicating effectively with everyone. I'm going to go ahead and stop this recording now. Um, that we are communicating effectively with 